Hello everyone and welcome back for this week's Brain Coach Tip. I'm Jan Bedell, otherwise known as the Little Giant Steps Brain Coach. I'm privileged to be here to share the revelations that God has given me. Over the past 20 plus years, I've walked with many different families on their journey to help their children be all that they were designed to be. I assume that's why you're here as well. So welcome. Hey, can you do me a favor and share the link to this with people that you know? It's estimated that one in five children are suffering as a struggling learner. So you never know what person in your path might really need this information. Many people have told me that it was a God thing that made them aware of the help we offer at Little Giant Steps. You might just be the link God wants to use so another family can get the help they are praying for. We thank you in advance for spreading the word. Today the topic is to label or not to label. That is the question. So I'm going to share with you some reasons why you might want to pursue a label for your particular situation and why it might not be as productive as you might think in other situations. First, I just want to brag on you a little bit. You know, homeschool parents, I believe, are the most resourceful, proactive, and dedicated people on the planet. So thank you for being here and being so dedicated and find the help that your child needs. If you've tuned in before, you know that I have a lot of experience with special needs. As my daughter was born over 38 years ago with some pretty severe special needs. I was just where you were many years ago. I knew something was wrong, and the doctor kept wanting to do genetic testing for genetic anomalies. It got so bad in the testing frenzy that since they couldn't find anything wrong in the blood, they thought they'd just take some skin to look for some kind of genetic differences. And Janae carried a scar on her arm until the day she died. When I finally figured out they were just wanting to put a label on her and maybe put her in a group of particular anomalies, I didn't really want to pursue that because I just wanted help for her. But it can be a really confusing world out there. It's a world of labels. I've had some children come in with six or seven labels, and there's some real ramifications to that. You sometimes wonder, well, is this going to be on their permanent record? Are they going to recommend medications that maybe I don't want to put my child on? They might even say for me not to homeschool. That was some of my concerns. And they might even recommend some expensive program that's beyond my resources. So there's all kinds of ramifications that you want to consider when considering whether to label or not. Before we go on, I just want to take a minute to thank our sponsor, Little Giant Steps for allowing me the privilege of coming to you each week with what I hope you will find encouragement and equipping. Little Giant Steps stands for Little Neurodevelopmental Steps Equal Giant Strides in Academic or Functional Achievement. Little Giant Steps does have a website that has lots of resources and products for helping the brain to work better. One vehicle that God uses to get the word out about this life-changing message of the neurodevelopmental approach is going to homeschool conferences. We do that often. At one conference, a mom had gone through the whole conference, and they, she was on the last aisle, and she prayed. She said, Lord, I've got to have some help for my child, and I've been through this whole building, and this is the last aisle. So what happened is, after her prayer, she turned the corner, and there was our booth, fulfilling one of our missions, which is to be answered prayer for other people. You know, I received a lot of comfort from the neurodevelopmental approach because it had answers about Janae's situation and what I could do to change it. That's one of our missions, too, and it comes from 2 Corinthians 1.4, which says, Who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So that's one of our missions, is to be answered prayer for other people. So visit Little Giant Steps and get some answers for yourself. Our labeling journey started when Janae was about 12 months old. Her pediatrician just said she's developmentally delayed all the way across the board. We did early childhood intervention, 
and we tried public school for a little while didn't last very long and then we found a really wonderful private school it was a montessori school where she could be with her peers and be pulled out to get extra help we loved that situation but at some point they were really not knowing how to help her much they said if we got her some testing maybe they could help us and help them know how to help her better and so we decided to go ahead and do that testing and this is where sometimes testing can be very devastating we got a diagnosis of low iq and then professionals that told us that we were doing the exact wrong thing in what we were doing in that private school that we needed to go to a public school where they had experts that could handle that and i just want you to know you can homeschool your special needs child and you should in my opinion i was public school trained so i didn't really know about homeschooling until Janae was about nine when we moved to the Dallas, Texas area. God showed me homeschooling there, and it was really life-changing. She did really well, but I could only get her to a certain point, and I was about to give up when she was about 15, and that's when I found the neurodevelopmental approach. When I found that, it changed her life, and then I started seeing people with dyslexia coming in, and they were getting help, people with ADD and all kinds of labels were getting help and that's when i got on the bandwagon and really went after trying to help people learn about this approach there are several resources for the question of to label or not to label you can always ask the brain coach just email us at office at littlegiantsteps.com or you can go to our facebook page and ask questions there and then, of course, you always want to ask God about what's the best for your child, whether a label would be beneficial to them. As far as one of the cons for labeling, I can't tell you how many parents have come to me very disappointed, thinking that they're doing the right thing in going to get a label, and then finding out all they got was a label. They had a few general recommendations, a reassurance that sure enough your child is having problems and we'll call it this but not really a lot to do about it some labels can even be very devastating i have one family that i worked with and their son david got a very hard diagnosis when he was about eight or nine they said he was pdd nos now if you don't know about that label it's pervasive developmental disorder which means lots of things are going on that are wrong and nos is not otherwise specified which to me says we don't have a clue but there's a lot of things wrong with this child david got that diagnosis and a really hard prediction about his future he would never drive he would never finish school he wouldn't do this he wouldn't that he wouldn't live on his own all of those things are really not happening. David's a, an adult now that has been driving since he was about 18. He had a full-time job for a very long time and he's just now been able to live on his own. He has some support from his mom but all of those things that the naysayers because of that label told the mom did not come true. They had some intervention with neurodevelopment and it totally changed the outcome. One of the reasons not to label could be that you might project onto the future what really doesn't have to be. If you're a reader, you might want to consider the book by Linda Kane called The Neurodevelopmental Approach. You can find it on the Little Giant Step store. This will inspire you with example after example of children defying the odds of labels. She even has a chapter called The Crush of Labels. I want to share with you one of those stories. There was a little boy named Carter who was actually label-free when he started his neurodevelopmental plan. And since we don't label, we just try to find out where the child is functioning in six different areas in nine levels of brain development. Parents got things that could help him and they did not limit his opportunities. They met with a geneticist a couple of years later at the insistence of their pediatrician. The geneticist, only having the information from the blood test, not knowing the child, said, I'm sorry to tell you that your child has Angelman syndrome. And then he went on 
to say things like he'll probably never talk or walk or ride a bike and he won't learn to read. Carter's parents were looked very confused because he was already doing these things. He was already running and riding a bike and reading and talking quite well. So sometimes the danger of labels is that it lowers the expectation and it also limits your opportunities. If you don't have opportunity, there's no way that you can do any better because of the opportunities being limited. One of the families that I personally worked with several years after the children were on a neurodevelopmental program, Michelle said, my three children were on the autism spectrum. So what we looked at is what were causing the symptoms that were giving these children this label of being on the spectrum. Sarah had a lot of sensory issues, but her issues paled in comparison to Jonathan, who would have four or five meltdowns a day. He was extremely hypersensitive to auditory and had many more symptoms that caused him to not even be able to function. So while mom's concentrating on Jonathan because he's having so many meltdowns, she didn't hardly notice David, who was sitting over in the corner, not really talking much and rocking a lot. After specific activities were given to help stimulate their brains, Jonathan, who was the worst of all the symptoms, can now do robotics in a gym, of all things, where it's echoing and everything. So his sensitivities were much reduced in, in every area and is much better able to function. And recently, Michelle sent me a picture of David as the star of the play. He was Charlie Brown. In my opinion, most labels are symptomatic labels. It's just a list of symptoms, and each one of those symptoms is caused by some inefficiency in the brain. That's what we concentrate on. So instead of putting a label on something, we say, say no to labels and yes to hope. Because once you see the symptom and find the root cause and do something about it, then the outcome is totally different. What tends to happen with a lot of children, the typical or the traditional path, is they're in the educational system, they fail, then they test them, and then they label them, and then they modify their work, and then the child gets further and further behind. It's actually the opposite that often happens. Let me tell you the story of Daniel. Daniel was 14 years old when I first saw him, and he couldn't hardly read three words. He couldn't remember from one day to the next, even sight words. And Daniel, after a year and a half of being on a neurodevelopmental program, he went from not being able to read at 14 to graduating on time from high school, and then he got a 3.8 in college. That's pretty amazing. It really accelerates the learning when the brain inefficiencies are addressed. Today, Daniel is a father of three, and I'm thinking he's a millionaire by now. He, t he always told his mom he was going to be one, even before he could read, and it was true. He was really smart, but his brain was just not working the way it should. You know, if, if I had listened to the people that gave Janae the low IQ label when she was just four years old, she wouldn't have even been given the opportunity to read because people with that kind of IQ don't learn to read. But I didn't listen to that. I just went ahead and gave her the opportunity. Our belief is the potential of an individual is a direct reflection of the opportunities and stimulation which are presented to them. So when there's different things presented, then there's different outcomes. So have high expectations. I always expected the best and kept shooting for the best. We didn't know, always get there in many areas, obviously, but we kept moving toward that with every effort that we made. And again, homeschooling is the best way to go. Homeschooling afforded me the way to give Janae the opportunities that she needed, and the neurodevelopmental approach gave me the way to make those efforts effective. If you know the right thing to do, it's amazing what can really happen. The story of Paige is another example of when labels can be really hard. Paige was brilliant, but she was really non-functioning. She had to be on medications. 
She had gone to church counseling over and over again with no results. She had been labeled bipolar. When Paige was given the opportunity to have a neurodevelopmental program, we actually found out that she was using the wrong hand, and that was what's causing so much of her dysfunction. Amazingly, today, going from a non-functioning individual that couldn't live on her own, couldn't hold down a job, she's now the secretary of a school, organizing students, parents, and staff. Here's an example of some root causes that we find as neurodevelopmentalists. We had some kids that were labeled dyslexic, and we found that almost 100% of them had low auditory and visual short-term memory issues. They were also mixed dominant. It was almost the same thing with kids labeled ADD and ADHD. So there's some commonality that overlaps these, these symptoms that cause many of the labels to be given to the children. If you want to find out more about auditory processing or auditory short-term memory, check out podcast number four. And then the dominance is discussed in the dyslexia podcast number seven. So look into that so you can find out more about these root causes. So I've made a bit of a case of why not to label, but there are times that you do need a label. If your child needs medications, they're going to have to have a label to be able to get that. There are expensive interventions that are sometimes required, like ABA kind of interventions, where insurance needs to be involved, and then of course there has to be a label for that. If speech therapy is needed, you may want a label for that so you can get some. Anytime you need help with finances through your insurance company, you're going to have to have a label. Also, vocational training is available to many of the children and adults if they have a label. If your child needed to live in a group home eventually when you're not around, then you would need a label for that. And if they need some ongoing support or you need to have guardianship, which this is a very, you know, tricky situation there, whether you need guardianship. My daughter was very compliant. She wouldn't be going and saying she's going to live somewhere uh, without our permission or something like that. But what I found out is medically, she would have to make her own decisions and she wasn't able to do that. So we went ahead and pursued guardianship for her. So there's instances that a label is definitely important. So I'm not saying don't ever label. I'm just saying don't let those labels limit. Give them opportunities. But sometimes it's not really necessary to have a label because it doesn't help the situation. I used to shy away from any kind of broadcasting like this or putting things out there too much, going to conventions outside our local area or anything because it seemed like if you told people there was help but they couldn't get to it, that's worse than not knowing how to help. So that's why we've been encouraged along the way to create in-home programs that we can do at a distance. These programs address all different areas of brain function, the brain organization and having to do with their mobility and their coordination. It has academics auditory and visual processing, works on their dominance and sensory integration, just looks at the child as a whole person and finds out where the glitches are and helps you do something about it. There's several different ways you can find out about this. There's a neurodevelopmental DVD that's available online. It's called The Neurodevelopmental Approach. There's that book I told you about that Linda created, The Neurodevelopmental Approach. And there's also several different products. One is an advanced brain training. That's for seven-year-olds or older. And you fill out a history form. And based on that, because of the symptoms, we know things that can help the brain. You can start out with something like that. If the child is six or under, then you can do a jumpstart program, which is similar to the advanced brain training, just for younger children. We also have individual evaluations that we do in Texas and some of the places that we travel for conventions. And also we have products that are neurodevelopment in a box. For younger children, this is the early learning foundations. You can either prevent learning challenges by making sure they go through all the developmental stages or 
you can bring them through those stages. Our brain is amazing. God has given us such a gift because when you stimulate the brain, it changes. I feel certain a lot of what I've said may bring up a lot of other questions that you might have. So be sure to email us at office at littlegiantsteps.com and put in the subject line brain coach question mark and that will be sure to get to me. My hope is that this important information encourages you to stay tuned for more brain coach tips to make life and learning easier. Next week we'll be exploring the topic getting back in the swing of school after the holiday. For now, it's the Brain Coach signing off and reminding you that neurodevelopment is a dynamic approach to life. So think differently. The solution is not in the problem, and it's not in the label either. Bye now.